This is a replay from a battle I had against Achilles in the Milk and Cookies Total War tournament. And I haven't been playing, uh, basically haven't been playing for the past week, just a game or two. So I was a bit worried about this matchup. Uh, Achilles picked Parthia and Armenia because um, Indie Pride wanted to see something other than rush spams, sword spams. I picked Getai and Bactria to counter Armenia and I was allowed to play with Bactria. I d didn't expect this build, I thought I would come up against something like 6 Persian Cavalry and the rest Axis, uh, to be honest. So the map is uh, Egypt, uh, the map is the Pyramids and Achilles picked, th picked this map. Which is good because for me, because if I started on this side I would have had the forest here. And if I started on this side, I would have the forest here. So that is going to negate the massive advantage in skirmishing that Armenia has. So Armenia, I'll just go slow here so we have the time to go over the builds. Armenia has three horse archers. They are inferior to my horse archers due to them having 35 missile damage. Mine have 40. Noble blood, Persian cavalry, very good uh, cheap shock cavalry. Then he has six eastern archers. He has... Hillman, Axeman, uh, Royal Cataphracts in the center, two Eastern Cataphracts. Uh, the same setup on the other side with Axeman, Hillman, Persian Cavalry, Noble Blood, and three Eastern Archers. My build consists of six Armored Spears, four Mercenary Axe Warriors, two Noble Swords, three Bow Horse, two Dacian Heavy Bowmen, and three Spear Horse. And I'm just going to camp it out in the forest here, engage him with my skirmishers. What I want to do is I want to use my bow horse to draw fire from his eastern archers, uh, keep his archers away from my line, and then I want to move in and move out with my bow horse in order to, to draw out fire from his archers and make them deplete their ammunition. Because it's clear looking at this build that Achilles doesn't want to engage early. He only has four infantry units and two of those are shit hillmen. I have a shit ton of infantry units and his strength is in his cavalry, in his shock cavalry and in his, his skirmishers. So I have to be careful. If I move up here and I try to engage his line, I'm going to be surrounded on all sides due to his deployment. In the center, he has the very strong eastern cataphracts. On the flanks, he has the eastern archers. So if I move up here through the center, I'm going to get charged by very good shock cavalry. And I'm going to get shot to death with the eastern archers. And even though I win the infantry engagement, which I will, he will still have his skirmishers and still have his his very strong cavalry left. So, so I can't really engage him in that way. I'll fast forward here because uh, just some light skirmishing going on, nothing interesting. I want to keep my bow horse to to scare away his horse archers since my bow horse have superior damage to the horse archers. Uh, they have the same amount of shots per minute, they don't have armor either of them. So 35 morale, 70 health, 70 health, 30 morale. The bow horse should come out on top against his uh, horse archers. I have no intention of leaving the woods, but I am going to start engaging a bit with my dashing heavy bowmen. I'm going to see if I can micro so that I m make him use ammunition that doesn't hit, like this. Um, I want to do that as much as possible so he doesn't have ammunition left on his archers for the late game. So I decided to play, since I haven't played a lot lately, I decided to go for a very slow paced long game. And this is perfect for the build that I'm up against because he has so many skirmishers, so much cavalry. The forest here is the perfect spot for me to keep my army. If I move my army out of the forest, I'm basically giving, uh, I'm giving uh, Achilles the victory on a silver platter. I could still do well against his... Um, I will defeat this infantry. I could do well against this cataphracts due to the massive number of spears I have and due to being able to move in with the spear horse to stop charges. But I much, uh, I much prefer staying here where I have cover, where my inferior number of skirmishers is going to be able to be protected. Um, the forest is also going to slow down his, um, his uh, charges. And I wondered a bit why he didn't pick Nematosana, but it turned out that Nematosana was banned from the map pool in this battle, so Nematosana would have been a lot better for Armenia in this matchup, while the Pyramids, of course, was much better for me. So I just 
just want to see if I can bait out some uh, some arrows here, but it looks like he he turned off fire at will, which was a good idea. So I want to pull in his horse archers as well to be able to get some shots off with my dash and heavy bowmen. So moving away, my bow horse is going to do that. He has some cavalry hidden here in the forest, and I want to scare that out. Use some of my bow horse to to run over here and do some damage to his horse archers. There's his noble blood cavalry. I'm going to chase away the noble blood cavalry. Do some damage to his horse archers. And I'm actually killing quite a few horse archers here. So he has to withdraw. I did get the best of that engagement by far. Because I had support here. So nice kills on the bow horse already. Chasing after his uh, noble blood cavalry. I'm not really getting any kills on it. Because I'm too far out of range. And the shots are going to miss. The noble blood cavalry is fresh. While these guys are winded. So... They are, they are a bit slower than they would be otherwise. I'll just try to bait some arrows out here as well. You can see the arrows are flying, but they're not really hitting my bow horse because I'm microing them, microing them away. So even though he has superior range, I am going to be able to, to make him expend his arrows and not take any damage myself. So not the most interesting strategy, but I think this is the strategy that is going to win me the long game here. And here I am going for the long game. Since I can't really engage him without putting myself in a very disadvantageous situation, I'm going to keep cycling bow horse. Uh, this bow horse is becoming tired because we're on a hot map, so they'll get fatigued quicker. And I'll use my bow horse for one last uh, move towards his archers. His archers are going to fire. They're going to miss. And... Another volley coming in here and missing, so he's wasting quite a lot of arrows on my bow horse while not killing any bow horse. And I'll move this unit of bow horse, uh, they're very tired, you can see how fast they fatigue on this map. So I won't be able to run them around for, uh, for a long time without paying the price in fatigue. Here we have another case of him just straight up missing with arrows. So these guys are being very useful in baiting away the arrows. He hit with one arrow there, but it wasn't Riders enough to forwards. kill any of my bow horse. But now that they are becoming very tired, I have to cycle out and use another unit of fresh bow horse to do the same. And since there is no time limit on this battle, I just figure I'll keep doing this forever, basically. Until he either runs out of ammunition, or he gets so frustrated that he just engages me. And if he, if he engages me in this, in this small patch of forest, it's going to be pretty bad for Armenia because Armenia does not have the infantry to to grind it out against my infantry. And Armenia has to rely on the skirmishers and the cavalry charges for doing the damage it needs. Now. Still not taking any um, casualties on the bow horse, which is nice. Now let's see here if I can do the same again with all of these units. Forward. Pulling away, and I was able to move back just in time. A lot of arrows just missing the target. And this is what's so nice with the with the bow horse. Although they're not doing any damage now, the eastern archers have to fire to stop from being fired on themselves. But I'm going to be able to, to make them spend a lot of arrows. Uh, these arrows will probably fall short as well. Yeah, I didn't hit anything, so I should have turned fire at will off there. Because it's not really effective running away and then firing. They can miss with a lot of their shots that way. But now I have to cycle up this unit as well. Because it's starting to to uh, feel the effects of running around on a hot map. I don't want to engage his, uh, his uh, horse archers directly. Because I want to keep my horse archers alive for the late game. To be able to to be able to take ride down eastern archers because I'll need all of my spear horse to stop cataphracts and to stop them from just cycle charging my infantry into oblivion. So going for some more baiting with a fresh unit of bow horse. Advance at speed. And the eastern archers are firing. Contact arrows incoming, but they are again missing. So this is the plan, just steal one volley after another from his uh, from his eastern archers. Keep everything nice and close together so he can't pick apart my units one by one. Forward. Running in, trying to get some shots off on the horse archers, but he pulled them away, wisely so. The eastern archers are not firing now, so I'm going to see if I can bait out some arrows from these eastern archers over here. And it looks like they're firing, so I'm going to 
pull away. And let's see if I can make it in time. Well yep, I can make it in time. And then I fired at his cataphracts, but I wasted some of my arrows because they fell short. So nice to be aware of that uh, it goes both ways. If you're firing when running away too fast, you might just miss. But it's worth it uh, in pulling away the arrows of these eastern archers. The bowhors are being very useful in just doing that at the moment. So here he's moving up with his horse archers, trying to move around. But I can use my own horse archers to kind of keep his his at a distance and I can also support with the dash and heavy bowmen to get extra arrows uh, in on the uh, on the horse archers he's pulling away <laughs> this is anti rush this this army so indie pride uh, oh, this this battle so indie pride is probably happy about that although I do have a quite strong infantry uh, component but this is the uh, this is the the round before the semi-finals so I don't want to take unnecessary risks, especially when I'm not confident in my micro ability. Moving the bowhorse up, getting some shots in on his uh, Cappadoc uh, his noble blood cavalry. I wanted to go for his archers here, but he moved up his ca eastern cataphracts, and I don't want to waste my bowhorse just yet. Uh, getting uh, charging in with the spare horse, the spare horse should lose against the noble blood, but there is a lot of uh, support from my bowhorse. Counter cavalry tactics. Uh, the mercenary axe warriors are going to get wrecked by the Persian cavalry, but the Persian cavalry ate, uh, ate some javelins and they're going to lose a lot of men. Doing some nice rear charges here and chasing away my cavalry, but pulling out with the noble blood is going to cause some casualties to them. So here I'm just using my superior numbers to rush in, uh, going into shield wall with the armored spears, chasing after the eastern cataphracts with some of them. And the armored spears, the only bad thing about armored spears is that they don't have javelins. But they can do a lot of damage to Eastern Cataphracts when using counter cavalry tactics. 45 bonus against large, so already a unit of Cataphracts went down without doing much. Getting Javelins in on the Eastern Archers. This unit of Persian Cavalry is being ground to death by Spare Horse and by Mercenary Axe Warriors. The uh, Armored Spears are holding for some time against the Axemen. Sending in the Noble Blood Cavalry. Uh, the charge was stopped, so nicely done there by Achilles. My spare horse are going to die really, really badly to the Noble Blood Cavalry. But I am also able to get my Mercenary Axe Warriors into the Persian Cavalry over here. And that should do a lot of damage to them. Cavalry units for Armenia are going down all across the battlefield. The Hillmen are of course going down, crappy units. The Royal Cataphracts charged into my line, but I had my guys in Shield Wall. And I'm able to use Counter Cavalry Tactics again on the Armored Spears. That's going to kill the Royal Cataphracts really, really quickly. Again, this is not good terrain for them to be in. Some of my um, cavalry units are free to run after his eastern archers. He's not able to protect them anymore. I did manage to get into my my uh, bow horse with his his uh, noble blood cavalry. Uh, the archers are going probably going to ride in and try to get at my dash and heavy bowmen. But the dash and heavy bowmen are pretty good, shooting down the unit last uh, units of Persian cavalry. I'm doing well overall in these engagements, taking some damage from Eastern Archers, but nothing worrying yet. The uh, Dash and Heavy Bowmen are getting charged by Horse Archers, but since these guys have, have uh, quite a lot of armor, they're going to do well against the Horse Archers in melee. So nice to have the more sturdy Archer units. The Eastern Archers are wavering from being attacked by Spear Horse, charging into his general just to stop him a bit and do some damage on the charge. So now this is looking pretty good for me. I still have my horse archers left. The horse archers of Armenia are becoming very depleted. I have defeated all of the infantry. The axemen are going down, attacked in the rear. And uh, now I can just use these free units to chase away his uh, eastern archers. The general of Parthia is almost dead as well and he is exhausted. So this unit of eastern cataphracts is not going to be enough for Armenia. Charging in with my depleted spear horse just to stop them for a little while while I chase after his Eastern Archers there. And the Royal Cataphract General is still alive, but he is going to run into this blob of um, Armored Spears and he's going to take quite a lot of damage that way. Javelins incoming from the Mercenary Axe Warriors and very nice kills on the Mercenary Axe Warriors. I'm glad I, I'm glad I took those guys. And then the Bowhors are going to start firing with Heavy Shot on the Cataphracts. The Cataphracts are going to go down very quickly to Heavy Shot. Now there's only skirmishers left on the field for for uh, Armenia, together with these depleted cataphract units. Getting into the cataphracts and pulling down a few more of them. 
they're wavering, I'm not doing too well. I have attack orders on this unit instead of the general, so I'm not able to take down the general as effective as I would have liked to. Devastating charge against my uh, spear, no, against my uh, armored spears. So that unit got wrecked by the eastern cataphracts. And it could, if he had more cataphracts left, it could be really dangerous for me because all of these infantry units running around could just have been cycle charged to death. The eastern cataphracts are going to go down to heavy shot. The um, eastern archers shatters because the general just died. And although the Eastern Cataphracts are getting a nice charge on my general, it's not really enough at this point. Just too much gets I left on the battlefield. Heavy bows going up against the Eastern Archers, doing a lot of damage to them. And uh, these guys are riding in, but I'm firing at them as they're riding. So two units going down, we have the Eastern Cataphracts left. I'm going to fire at the Eastern Cataphracts with my dash and heavy bows. This unit should get killed by the cataphracts even though they are very very depleted. Some more javelins incoming possibly against the eastern cataphracts. Getting charged by my general and his other noble sword unit. Now it's just a matter of taking down this last unit of eastern cataphracts, chasing down the eastern archers and for that I'm going to use my bow horse charge in and destroy the eastern archers in melee. The bow horse is pretty shitty of course, but the impact damage that they do against archers on the move is going to allow them to defeat them. Over here as well, uh, the archers stopped moving so I'm going to be able to charge them with armored spears and the armored spears are going to do a lot of damage. So that's it basically, Armenia is quickly routing off the field and good game, well played to, to uh, Achilles. I was a bit surprised at the build he brought. His axes did okay, his cavalry was neutralized, enlarged by the forest. Um, it's going to be very difficult to use Armenia with with this much cavalry against uh, six armored spears and, and the cavalry support that I had. The dash and heavy bowmen did extremely well, stayed alive and got a lot of kills, some of them very important. And um, yeah, I think, I think uh, what I was uh, planning for was a slightly different Armenia build. I was I actually thought that Achilles would bring something like let's say see here. Uh, I thought that Achilles would bring something like noble spear general, uh, then six axes. So basically, an Ar Armenian rush build was what I was expecting. Six uh, six Persian cavalry, three horse archers. And then the rest, either n some no more noble spears, some Persian hoplites. Uh, I, I actually thought he didn't. He, he was going to skip the. Um, he was going to skip the foot skirmishers entirely, and maybe even go for costly axemen and then the standard axemen. So I think this type of build, that was what I was fearing I would come up against, and I, th I think that could have been extremely effective in defeating my cavalry and then having the numbers left to engage my my infantry while going for rear charges with the Persian cavalry. Even something like just removing the horse archers altogether, uh, bringing, <laughs> bringing uh, six hillmen and six Kartli axemen. This is a build that can be extremely devastating. Uh, against the build that I brought, this could have been just so dangerous. You can even have a horse archer just for chasing around my horse archers in the late game or uh, if if he wanted to go cheaper on the if he wanted to just bring the cartly axemen he could have for example gone for a bunch of eastern slingers instead so he could have skirmished against my dash and heavy bowmen then brought an eastern spearman so this is what i was expecting and what i was afraid he would bring but the pyramids map is nice because there is a forest on each side so since he brought the pyramid uh, since he cho chose the map the pyramids I felt confident that the Getai, with uh, with uh, the very sturdy armored spears with cavalry counter tactics, would be able to hold off in the forest, and and they were able to do so against uh, on an open map like Nematusana, It would have ju just been much more difficult for me to do something about uh, the build that 
the build that Achilles brought because he deployed very wide. He didn't really have infantry centers for me to use my infantry against. And if I had gone for his infantry in this battle, I would have been shot to pieces from all sides by skirmishers. And the I w you saw what happened to my infantry when it was on the move with the cataphracts. And even Persian cavalry could have done devastating charges against my infantry if my infantry was, was moving. Especially if my infantry was uh, a bit depleted from having been fired upon by skirmishers. So that's it. Now I'm in the semi-finals in the Milk and, to uh, Milk and Cookies Total War... Um, tournament which I'm pretty excited about I don't know who I will be facing but the factions that I've used are Carthage, Chimeria and um, the Getai so I have quite a few more good factions to choose in the because you can only pick uh, use a faction once up until the finals so I have a lot of good factions left to use in this tournament strength and honor <laughs>